got it. Welcome to the show. We got elite model Amy Taylor here. We're going to talk about all kinds of just kind of movie genre deep cuts. And then we're going to get into kind of a bigger chat on very big social topic, sex work. <laughs> <laughs> the betrayal on screen versus behind the scenes. And I got a few fun statistics to show. Not fun. That's not the right word, but uh, just very intriguing and insightful, as well as just talking about how many are trying to unionize that type of work now. So you can let me know your thoughts on it too, hence why you're here. But um, uh, so first off, uh, when did, how did you get into this uh, type of profession? Yeah, so I have all the thoughts about like our rights versus our work and some of my thoughts are complicated. I will get into that later, but like I don't it's, think you even it's have never going to gonna stop being complicated. <laughs> no, it never. And you don't even have to like it to know right? that people deserve to like be less harmed, right? And that's kind of where I stand. I don't I would not recommend anybody do this. I think it's too difficult. I would tell somebody to choose a different life. Um it's it's the one I'm, you know, sort of fell into and made the best of and have knock on wood survived so far but i cannot recommend it i think it's too hard it's it's too annoying even if yeah. you survive like so far i have but yeah you don't even have to like it or approve of it you can still think it's sleazy or a gross or, but you do have to acknowledge not you but the world has to acknowledge it will never go away and therefore how can we make it less harmful for all those involved and if you don't care about people being harmed then i don't really know how to talk to you because that's kind of it. yeah it's kind of <laughs> like it's kind of like talking to a war criminal is like i think this conversation yeah. was over before we even got started <laughs> well yeah i'm operating from the premise that most people would like the youngest and most vulnerable of, of us to make it to their older years instead of being you know killed in a ditch before they even got a chance ah uh, there's so, an image yeah well that's a lot of who's in sex work is young broke people mostly mm -hmm. women but not all lots of men too so, you know, I just yeah. want them to be killed less and hurt and all the other harms less. So anyway, soapbox, sorry. You, uh, but um, but in terms of the portrayals in film, um, I'm sure you've seen there's been funny ones. There's been offensive ones. There's been ones that are overly complimentary, like they're too good. And it's it's not always really that good. Uh, yeah. Uh, absolutely that and it, it kind of even just goes back to i mean gigolo have you have you seen that yeah uh that, there's that one they i still haven't seen the tv show version of it but um with rob uh, Schneider. oh well not not that one i thought you were talking about the richard Gere film <laughs> oh yeah no american gigolo is a classic That's okay a um but no. that, there's this other one on stars now i haven't seen yet but I like what they've done with shows like Power, but I need to check it out. It's called PU Valley. I don't know that. I'll have to uh, it's, That's about strippers. I forget where it's based, but it's interesting how so many just assume it's only in one area, uh, this kind of work. And it's like, no, this goes from anyone to escorts to, you know. Only modeling. porn, peep show. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, um, in Times Square, we still have a peep show here in New York City. It's gross. It's it's not doesn't do anything for me, but I went once because I'm eternally curious. And, uh, <laughs> Curiosity, I man. I, yeah. I don't know that I need to go again, but it was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, probably uh, Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo is a comedy. It's Rob Schneider from Saturday. He was in Saturday Night Live. And I think mm -hmm. many people, Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo. It's very silly. I'll um, never forget when Roger Ebert gave a hysterical review and actually combated him when the comedians involved couldn't take a joke. And he's like, hey, I'm not attacking you. I'm just telling you your movie sucks. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, and I wouldn't call Deuce Bigelow an excellent film, but it's funny. And for some reason, the trope of like a male gigolo doesn't make the world fear and angry. They don't get fearful. They don't want to infantilize them they sort of make fun of it sometimes it's a little bit silly but i think they don't worry as much for the male safety because you know men are usually bigger than women and all that stuff uh physically the public doesn't think of them as in as much danger as they do when the sex worker is a woman like i said probably largely for physical reasons yeah um, comedian aisha tyler brought that up how it was just and She's not the first, but there was this one historical uh, interview I just remember bringing up. I think it was one of her books, and she's just talking about how it's like, why is it that, you know, 
when people get caught cheating, you know, the woman instantly gets the whore treatment, but the guy gets off, oh, he's an asshole. I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah, and neither of them might be. I mean, those things are complicated, but maybe yeah. because it's considered effort for men to get laid and total non-effort for women to get laid. And so we like things that are that require effort. We never really reward behavior that is is the default lowest energy state behavior, right? Mm-hmm. We like people who are successful or get up early or till the farms or everything we <laughs> everything we revere yeah. requires effort and getting laid for women if you're good looking does not. Uh, why? Well, because you guys will give it away, and so I blame you. Just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, well, God, that's the yep. other thing too. Why? Why is it that guys? who are responsible for so much shit always play the victim card is like no 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 you 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 sewed this together you you created this well Well, (laughs) they want sex but i always wondered why they don't like sluts and truth be told in my world i've seen that men often do like sluts they just can't admit it um that said when when they fall in love of course we're jealous creatures when you love somebody it can be scary to think that they might prefer sleeping with somebody else and then maybe even being with somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. There's the swinger thing, and there's people who truly can separate love and sex, but the data shows that swingers do break up more than non-swingers. Everybody breaks up. Interesting. Wow. Well, and how good is the data? And everybody breaks up a lot. I thought it was just when you were in open, which was, to me, always, I have no experience with it, but it always sounded to me like kind of a closed-off denial. Yeah. Like, hey, we're together, but I know you're coming home late because you're with someone else. <laughs> well, and I mean, I have friends who are in open relationships, and they claim that it doesn't diminish, that they can handle, and they're not jealous, and I struggle to totally believe them, but that's just my own judgment, because when I've been deeply in love, I have felt a little possessive. I, tr- I try to navigate that, as we all do, but, you know, I'm a human being, like anybody. Nice. Hypocritical given my career choice, but hey. <laughs> Nobody ever said we were logical creatures, right? What is logic nowadays? Um, it's the truth. There's so much to do as I say, not as I do. Um, so on sexual alpha, I saw some very awesome stats. So 16% okay. of men said they'd paid for sex at least once, and 0.5% say they do it at least once per year. One sec, <laughs> zero. 16? 16. Okay. <laughs> Ninety-seven percent of people arrested for buying prostitutes in the U.S. are male, so that that checks out. I think <laughs> between yeah. seventy thousand and eighty thousand are arrested for prostitution each year in the U.S., and these arrests cost the taxpayers about two hundred million. <laughs> and it doesn't. The recidivism rate has got to be like a hundred percent. They, I don't think they did some documentary and they showed a guy. The guy's being forced to go to one of these John classes when they get busted for. they were all in there laughing and high-fiving each other and i i'm quite sure it does not stop them from doing it again yeah it's it's almost kind of an nba player kind of logic to it where it's just like well so i said something messed up but i did the apology and i still get paid anyway so it's kind of it it is almost like a dysfunctional classroom i mean my as a side reference my mother used to uh do uh, uh teaching at an inner city Okay. And they were forcing everyone to pass every student. Okay. And the students knew that, so therefore they weren't obligated to learn anything. Of course. So, pretty broken system there. Um, and I think a lot of this does seem to be very closed-minded, and uh, half the time we don't even want to take into account any kind of statistic, any kind of learning, any kind of environment. Um, sure. The stats continue uh, about 57% of Americans think paying... And accepting money for this act is morally wrong. And then um, it, it goes on to so many other statistics, but I thought it was interesting here. On average, it's cheaper to get prostitution in Colombia than in most any other country in the world. Okay. What's your, th- what's your thought on that? On how it, it's all kind of about the area. It's it's kind of even beyond just any kind of culture. Yeah, I mean, I imagine the the going rate must largely depend upon the cost of living. Mm-hmm. Here, just like most jobs depend upon cost of living and of course maybe the quality or the freedom i mean it's going to have to pay more if it's criminalized because there's more risk although uh in america the one county in nevada where it's 
perfectly allowed uh, outside of, well, there's two counties. I guess, anyway, they're both in Nevada, somewhere not far from Reno, somewhere not far from Vegas. Um, and mm-hmm. those brothels, uh, it's very expensive because they're completely above board. There's no skimming and tax avoidance and all that. They're paying. Um, and they have to do medical checks and they have to you know, jump through all the legal loopholes. So the rates are actually quite high and guys can't get away with any bad behavior. There's cameras and security and no woman working there is going to let her boundaries be pushed sexually or safety wise or otherwise because he's being timed when he's at the brothel. He can't get away with staying longer. He can't get away with being unsafe because she's subject to medical exams. She's not going to risk her career for this one client, no matter what he offers her. Cause if she catches something she's done, her career is over mm-hmm. because they, because they have mandatory testing. Um, so clients are often very unhappy with it because they get less, they feel less power for the money they spend. And, one of the major problems with getting sex work recognized as work is is our is actually the customers. They don't enjoy being thought of as work, right? Because that's not sexy to them. Is you know they want to think you like them. They like to push boundaries. They want to see if they can get unsafe sex. They want to see if they can get more time for less money. And when there's no legal system, they can get away with a lot more misbehavior. So, um, the we are up against a barrier of wanting to be recognized as real work, but the, mm-hmm. the other half of the transaction hates that very thought yeah, and, and does not like it thought of as being work. I mean, the, the GFE is the big seller in my business. The less you act like it's work, the happier the customer is. And I don't think much other work is like that. You know, when you go to Starbucks, they don't have to pretend they love giving you coffee for free to get you to return. Um, oh, well, in many ways, it does seem kind of like drugs where many view it as, or even just black market for going for guns. People are going for assuming you're the supplier and there's nothing more to it. But yeah. this is different in that, yes, you are pretending to initiate a plausible relationship and sometimes have it be a recurring deal. Well, and yeah, and they're, and, and when men are used to not paying for something, of course, there's, cultural like you said 57 percent of people think it's morally wrong even though you know in most marriages for almost all of human history the woman did not make any money so it was a financial relationship of course he paid for everything and he got the woman um maybe you had kids maybe you didn't maybe you got divorced maybe you didn't but um you know it would be like if you went to starbucks all your life and it was free and then suddenly they started charging you you'd probably be like hey what what the hell so you wouldn't (laughs) like it right so Mm -hmm. That's a that's another problem with sex work as work is that if if the customer in any business can find the same product for free, they they probably should try to right. That's that's smart consumerism. So if you're if you're competing with free, there's a lot of hatred of pay. Now, why would anybody pay when sure dating is possible for free or for cheap anyway, cheaper? Yep. The reasons they pay are either freedom. You don't have to call her ever again if you don't want. As Charlie Sheen said, you pay him to go away. There's a lot of truth to it. <laughs> oh, you don't have to lie and say you love her or yep. say you know, all that stuff. Um, often the woman is physically out of the guy's league. Either she's considerably younger um, or she's just way more beautiful than what he could get for free. Um, obviously, another big one is that he's married, right? Mm-hmm. And the payment is for her to not fuck up his life <laughs> um where an affair would uh, mm-hmm. the uh some of them are a lot lately are sort of socially awkward people who don't have a lot of experience dating and a professional dater is very good at putting people at ease and very good at usually getting along with strangers you know professional at dating so there are the sort of socially awkward set that choose it as a route to have a great date when dating on tinder does not typically go well for them so there's lots of reasons um and then i've even heard nowadays in inflationary times in manhattan where i live that taking a girl on three dinner dates to get to the third date where you get laid costs way more than an escort <laughs> if you have to go to restaurants and bars all night several times it ends My up more. i'm not sure about the math i guess it depends where you go but uh yeah that's that sounds like a big din in anyone's wallet though um, sure. Sure. So, so prostitutecollective.net had an interesting one on more than 70% of UK sex workers have 
previously worked in healthcare, education, or the voluntary sector, mm. and was increasing because poverty in their various areas. But they also found that of migrant ones, sex workers, less than 6% have been trafficked. So I think that was interesting how that kind of put away that whole claim that, hey, they must be on drugs or they must have been abused or their their services fund a trafficking organization. It's like not the case. It's really I mean, no different than back pages. <laughs> yeah, I mean, trafficking is relatively rare. Where it does happen, it's horrific, of course. Yeah. They're calling traffickers anyone who does management like online work and ads and answering emails for the sex worker. They're calling that person a trafficker. You, right. You, that person may not be an abuser at all. They may basically be a assistant. And uh, yeah, I think that's wrong. It, their trafficker was meant to be someone who was sort of abusive, taking too much of the money, mm-hmm. you know, a negative thing. And and many of them that are being now given felonies for trafficking are not at all harmful people. They're just working in an industry. Often, yeah, migrants, people who traditional better jobs are not available to them for lots of reasons. Um, I almost they, find it as bad as. Things. Uh, sharing movies unofficially online i'll often see people use the term bootleg or piracy and it's like these Um, people didn't make money off of it they're just sharing i mean the companies secretly want you to share their goods because that tells you there's an audience but it's interesting how i will still see people throw that out i'm like guys we did a private screening or we did a something on dropbox and shared a movie between us no income was made from that other person's work so that's not the right terminology in no way we're gonna buy this movie multiple times in no way did we say you know let's make money off so and so and those companies are doing just fine and i think yeah there yeah i mean there are situations you know we all get emails every week from guys trying to finesse us into uh letting them manage us and they're gonna they're trying to get you to fall in love and then turn over all your money to them (laughs) Uh, they're trying to flip the script, right? They're trying to BFE you, boyfriend experience, and, and finesse you. And I admire the chutzpah, but it, it doesn't work with the smart ones. But they'll continue to try. And those are just people who, I don't know, can't get a regular job or don't want to. And there's lots of reasons people try to do that. <laughs> Already um, lack any people skills. <laughs> maybe. I mean, who knows? They um, the the tr- The statistic about them having worked in healthcare and education and things, well, that's just where women work, right? I mean... Mm-hmm. Those are jobs traditionally more available to females. So that's not surprising. Um, I know lots of sex workers who are single mothers. And because of sex work, their kid can be in private school. The mom can work, you know, eight hours a week and make what a doctor makes. So she can be home with her children. There's no other job that will pay that she has, that these women have access to that will pay even remotely that well, not even close. So it is a choice. And are all of them thrilled about it? Not necessarily, but it is the best choice of what's available to them. Uh, and yeah. that's largely financial, but it's also it's a time thing. Uh, going back to the father of their children would be worse. Oof. Um, yeah. So it's complicated, like most things, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, don't even get me started on religious families who find out about this. You know, it's just like they will always, it's even more fascinating to me when i see a scandal involving a religious family because it's like okay well now you're using that to hide behind a flaw that you can just address the vast majority of our clients are right-wing religious conservative men Uh. (laughs) yeah that's and i think there's something that maybe when it's more forbidden and transgressive it's more exciting hence why they are they find it appealing (laughs) well they're more likely to be married and want to try to stay married for image reasons for power for (laughs) um they're older and that's who has the money right um but there are a lot of up-and-coming young men who are doing this they're not necessarily super religious or conservative it's not a sexism thing they're not trying to have power it's just an economic thing they say it's they have great dates that that go the way they want and they spend less money it's just just a logical move for them um you can't argue with the numbers and i don't know what I don't think that's necessarily good, but a lot of them have this idea that when they're in their 20s and working on their career, they're not ready to get married and have children anyway. They don't want to lie to some girl who might want that. So they'll just see companions for a few years and then maybe in the 
in a few years think about getting serious and dating for marriage later. So it's not illogical. It's not. It's so wild though that it well, came to that. I mean, it seems maybe lonely. I mean, yeah. I mean unhappy maybe marriage. Not. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe they're fine with it. I mean, people tend to be pretty rational. To your point about drugs, there's definitely drug use, but I I would I mean, I don't know about that. I don't do drugs. I don't see people who do drugs. I don't have any friends who do drugs. But whether the percentage of people in sex work doing drugs is higher or lower than the gen pop, I'm not sure. I mean, in, I think a lot of people do drugs in America and in the world in general, right? Oh, totally. I used to use Delta 8 THC gummies for sleep. Sure. That's fine. But if you, unfortunately, and I found out like anyone else, if you use too much of it, it does cause anxiety. So, but. Did it? it interesting. In no way am I condoning it, saying, oh, it's awful, it's garbage. No, it's it's a fine product. But like anything, you got to use it in moderation. Otherwise, it'll just become a dent in your road. I never but, liked weed. It made me antisocial and sleepy and hungry. But my <laughs> sister really liked it. She smoked so much pot in college. They didn't have all these gummies and things back then. But she got serious paranoia. Like borderline, yeah. like she had, she thought things were she would have been one of these that believed in all the conspiracy theories nowadays because she, oh, <laughs> she went nuts. She went nuts. She she had thoughts that were not connected to reality, and so she quit. And I don't think she's done it since. It's been more than twenty years. Um, but for me, it was never. I I just didn't like it. I no, uh, fair enough. I mean, I uh, I'm not a big drinker, but I know you know. I, in no way am I going to become one of the fifties. You know prohibition types who's like oh do away with it all it's bad and it's like no it's just there's an audience for anything <laughs> and you're to your point about moderation there are people that cannot handle sex work like they go down the rabbit hole of addiction to companions and they ruin their lives they spend way too much money they ruin their family they I mean, maybe you can get addicted to anything. I'm not sure. <laughs> but that does happen even in this business where they go hog wild and they got to see everybody and they lose their job and flip out. And yeah. I'm uh, sure if they got any bad social skills, that's definitely going to mess them up. <laughs> maybe, or just um, one I'm thinking of who really ruined his life was lived in a small town that he hated. He was He was from a huge international city moved somewhere for work that he really hated uh, was bored was super bored and he made a lot of money and had nothing to spend it on and oh, so he, wow. he found out about companions and he went nuts and then sugar babies and then girlfriends and then yeah he fucked up his whole life um he's okay now he's kind of rebuilding it but i think it was a problem of bored of time and money right he had too much time and too much money mm. and she was, I mean, he should have gotten a different hobby, I guess, or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it almost sounds like one of the many who have a midlife crisis because they have a strict family who yes. essentially tells them you must do this, so they oh do the God, job. Totally. <laughs> he was. He was deeply Catholic and midlife crisis. You're you're absolutely right. He never thought this is what I want to do. He never developed a actual persona outside of work. So there you go. <laughs> Maybe that's astute. I guess that's a trope, huh? I didn't grow up religious, so I don't have enough shame. That's My family, fortunately, said, if you want to be do that, you can have the option. But they were very, very liberal about it, saying, hey, just take it easy. You know, just like even the religions of the world classes, just bring it all in, understand the different form formats, and uh, decide what is going to make your world really come compile together. But That's nice. It's smart. But it's easier said than done. You're still going to have that judgmental neighbor who's like, what religion are you? I'm not judging. Yeah, sure you're not. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I don't know what city you're in. I'm in Dallas. <laughs> well, isn't Dallas a little more cosmopolitan than it used to be? I'm not sure. It can be. There's still some... Some of that? The, the <laughs> issue I find between going between downtown Dallas and downtown Fort Worth is you still got to pass through a lot of lesser inner cities. <laughs> and so it's just very annoying just seeing how so blatantly poor in some places versus middle class versus elite it really is. Like, you just can't hide it. 
it's very uh, apparent the minute you pass through whichever part of town you're in. <laughs> That's unfair. I had a girlfriend who lived in Fort Worth and she was so mad that Dallas was growing and getting too big. She was a real cowgirl. She didn't like big towns. There she, is a lot of rivalry. You still see. Yeah. Even with Austin and Houston, you will see people say, I re- I'll work with you. But unless you're from that city, I'm like, well, well what's going on here? <laughs> she said, she's like, I bring a bag lunch when I go to Dallas because I'm not spending any money there. And like, she was sort of kidding, but, but then that's the know, other thing too. Defend they, Texas against the whole world. Of course, she's a Texas. They have kid, but they're really not. So it's like any they're, of your friends playing a prank on you. And it's like, you keep saying that word. I don't think you know what it means. <laughs> I mean, I love how much Texas loves America and Texas loves Texas. I have the Here you go, baby. <laughs> it's great. I have the San Jacinto flag in my foyer because I used to work for an oil company that was headquartered in Houston. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and I, I loved my time. I used to be in Texas every other week for like, gosh, six or seven years. I really enjoyed Texas. I think it's a spectacular state that is unapologetically pro-Texas. It's great. Nice. It's uh, they like themselves and they have every right to. There's a lot of great stuff there, especially there is. Yeah, no way am I trying to show my own state. It's interesting how it goes in different forms and you never know who's into this versus that. Sure. I mean, we shit on New Jersey, but in the end, (laughs) I've encountered so many people from New Jersey and they hate it when I do an impression of like from a Saturday Night Live or something. They're like, that's not how we talk. I'm like, I'm sure it's not. I'm just. I read a thing that it's regarded, it's widely regarded as the ugliest accent in the world, the New York, New Jersey accent. Interesting. That sounds pretty self-deprecating mixed in with cynicism. (laughs) That's fitting with the type of people in this part of the world. Yeah. Kind of angry, like, but still we'll help you out, but still tell you to go fuck yourself while we're helping you out. (laughs) That's that's how we are. We got shit to do. Oh, and that's just it too. It's it's interesting how it's so common now. I see a mixture of the insult comedian persona mixed in with the but just kidding. I'm like, yeah, sure you are. <laughs> yeah, it's salty, but I'll tell you, nobody will stand up for you more than a New Yorker because some nonsense happens here. Like at least every decade, something really bad happens, <laughs> and these people, they you cannot keep them down. And they're also very proudly American, right? The financial center, 9-11 happened here. There's a lot of security here. So there's a lot to argue about. But in the end, New York is where all the capitalism stuff began. I mean, so there's a sort of patriotism here, a little different from Texas, but but not totally so, right? Lovely. Yeah, it's nice, right? I mean, the Staten Island people, they, they won't acknowledge Manhattan at all. They hate us. But in the end, you know. So there's some of that same off-the-grid kind of feuds that people only get if they're in said city. It's almost sure. like baseball kind of in football, but they're they're doing it in the form of my our state, and we're shitting on each other. <laughs> oh, we have a name for So when we fight among ourselves in sex work, we have a great name that you'll like for it. We call it the horarchy, like hierarchy. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's the fight between who is a higher price or lower price, who sees more clients or fewer clients. And, you know, because we're a bunch of bitches that fight with each other, too. But in the end, <laughs> we're all trying to we have a reference system where we keep each other alive by behind the scenes telling each other that's a good guy. That's a bad guy. So even like there's girls I don't like. There's plenty of girls who don't like me. Women, I mean, not girls. Sorry. Right. Sexist. Um, And uh, even the ones you hate will like participate in the reference system because God, it's just like Dallas and Fort Worth. We might hate <laughs> each other, but we're stuck here together. So hold my hand, idiot. Let's do gotta this together. Gotta be proud of who we are, even if we're self-loathing. Um, we're stuck, right? <laughs> where else are you going to go? Like family, I guess. Family. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to have adult film star uh, Derek Pierce on the show previously, and he talked a lot about how we all want the same thing. Sure. We just don't know how to say it. Yes. This is true. And I loved how he kind of had a confrontational kind of approach. He's like, anyone talks rumors, we're going to bat- we're gonna go outside. We're going to have a conversation. <laughs> I was like, damn. Wow. Okay. I like it. Because 
especially in his part of the industry, you know, you get so many people who are like, don't work with that guy. He or she is too rough or they're just an asshole. They just, <laughs> or they have yeah. poor uh, hygiene. I'm like, yeah, that's definitely a no, no in any area or any kind of profession. <laughs> Funny in porn, male porn stars get the brunt of like they get made fun of. They don't get paid as well. They're it's funny they don't get the stardom nearly as much. Really, as for, uh, I thought they got people. paid well. What I know, they don't get paid well <laughs> as well as the women. Not even close to my knowledge. I I've never done porn, so I I might be wrong, but that was my understanding. Yeah, but yeah, the uh, rough, funny what looks good on film. Like I quite locked. I used to really like to watch like Rocco Sofredi. But I don't know. I might be terrified to get fucked that way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it might it, be fun, but I'd be scared. Yeah. <laughs> even then, you would still... I think my issue is with how talks of the internet can be, you would still have just a bunch of people just stalking you online. I'm like, good lord, dude. I. <laughs> yeah. I don't want your number. <laughs> well, and I, I think it's... Being a male porn star is not that easy to get hard on command to finish on command mm -hmm. it's um it is actually a skill <laughs> i mean i think so i knew a guy who uh he saw a porn a girl who also did porn who was a companion and a porn star and they they got along really well he would see her from time to time he was a civilian he had a regular corporate job but she decided to film a gangbang porn and so she needed a oh. hundred men <laughs> so she called him it was I got like your number well and this guy said yes he was like what the hell i'm single like and she said you could wear sunglasses and we won't you know you'll just be in the background and he took a chance and he said he could not do it he could not get hard and he could not be part of this gangbang so he never ended up in the film it got cut uh but he said he was so impressed with the guys who could like go to town in front of 99 other men because he couldn't he got <laughs> he got stage fright well and that's a good point too i have been fortunate to be on film sets uh, just doing some extra work or production assistant stuff and same kind of deal you're going to meet so many personas some are very intimidating and but they all ultimately fall under you know the time is money yeah. if you can't get this done before lunch break you know you're yeah. off of here and it's nothing personal it's just so and so referred me to you and now their word doesn't mean anything or sure the and... reliability is the probably the main key to success i think the only way i was able to pay my rent and survive is i was reliable i never missed a flight i never flaked on a guy it wasn't about the money of course but these rich guys it's not the money it's their time if you waste mm -hmm. their time you're done you're out of their lives and that's a big enough punishment because you don't get an opportunity to meet people like that very often. And some of them really yeah. like you and can do huge things for you. I never really took advantage of that, but I know women who've started businesses and married clients and really elevated their social status because of sex work. Not wow. that that's, always, that's not always a given, but it does happen. And so wasting a powerful person's time, or like you said, somebody who's paying a bunch of crew and doing a shoot, like, it's not only is it rude, but it's stupid. Well, and th there's all those other film crew members also. They'll often, they know how, you know, they don't have a problem doing any kind of movie, but they'll often go under a different alias because they know how they're going to instantly get judged the minute people find out they've worked on, you know, pro a program you can't see if you're under 18, you know? <laughs> sure. I know a lot of makeup artists who have two makeup artist profiles. Oh, when, really? <laughs> that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, one they do like bridal and children's makeup, and the other one they do porn because it pays the bills. And uh, apparently, doing porn makeup is harder because it has to stay on. <laughs> and, that uh, makes sense. I knew there are some stuntmen who also had to be the stunt dick, so to speak. Sure. <laughs> that same kind of deal is like not really, but um, the, the beauty of that is if the movie's good or bad, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know, right? You get work because people know you behind the scenes. Um, and I almost feel like a lot of this judgment behind the scenes is just as bad as video games. Uh, video games have never been actually scientifically proven to have caused all these incel gunmen and shooters. Yeah, of course. But often they're still the scapegoat because parents don't play it. Sure. Well, not all I parents understand play it. They're just like, ah, oh, you're melting your brain. You're becoming a dumbass. I'm like, well, if you're already very dumb and having no social interaction, 
games might give you some you know some motivation so to speak to be a shithead but they're not don't actually understand. telling you <laughs> they used to blame punk music back mm-hmm. in the- you're gonna become think- a demon worshiper <laughs> yeah ozzy osborne and all that and they um they now know a lot games do a lot of good things for the brain like spatial awareness and if anything they take out the misbehaving stuff by you're doing it in a virtual world so you're right there was some study that when crime shows used to be on this is when cable before even on demand when you had to watch stuff live Mm -hmm. and so like the thursday night like csi set your vcr yeah yeah (laughs) I mean, well, they said violent crime would go down largely because people stayed home and didn't go out and get drunk and go to a bar and end up in a fight. and You know, all that goes along with that. There you go. The bad judgment. (laughs) Sure. I mean, staying home and playing a video game. And yeah, to your point, the outlet, you cannot suppress people's outlets for rage and yeah, pretend violence. Of course, you don't want people to do it in real life. And that Mm -hmm. should should be punished, always will be. But people need a steam valve. They need to fuck. They need to curse. They need to be anonymous online and pretend to yep. be somebody else because it's more fun than reality. Bingo. Um, <laughs> all of that has always existed and always will need to. Video games are just when it crosses over and somebody wants to do problems and do shenanigans in real life. Obviously, obviously, that's not the majority because most people play video games and most people are not shooting up schools. Yeah. <laughs> it can't be it can't be that video games are monstrously huge in asia and they don't even really have a school shooting problem pretty much i'm kind of the same way with just kind of any kind of videos where i'm like hey i'm yeah. i'm not for watching all these morbid or gross videos and same thing with a video game if i don't game anymore but hey if a video game is giving you the option to do something gross cool let it happen give it an adult rating whatever you know it's just Sure. You might as well invite the curiosity so you prevent someone from doing that in person. Sure. And pretending that people don't have a sort of need for a steam valve that might include pretending violence in a safe way, not Bingo. doing it. Is, pretending. It, well, it's, den- of course, it, uh, but that's denying reality. It's the same thing as denying that, like a lot of people right now want to, want to deny that teenagers fuck and like there's this weird <laughs> yeah I, so i taught sex education when i was a senior in high school we taught it to middle school students oh really well because cool. in the inner city the average age of loss of virginity was like 12 and so we knew that and, and yet so they, there's all this defunding now people well, are like don't have sex ahead i'm like well then they're gonna get curious <laughs> i know what are you gonna stop them from fucking with all those hormones that are happening at people it's nonsense and i yeah. we were 17 18 we learned that these younger kids would talk to us in a way they wouldn't talk to adults because we were older but not like a lot older so they trusted us more right Mm -hmm. but that's why they they sent us in instead of like some 40 year old that a kid that a a middle schooler wouldn't even talk to but now i'm sure that program wouldn't be allowed we would have been called pedophiles or something talking to and of course we were not even though we're trying to it's a gray area there's going to be someone who you know did something mature at an early age but they still got to figure out how to care for their baby and mm-hmm. well and just the fact that they lost their virginity at that young an age sure it happens a lot I, I don't know my sister had kids when when her kids were they're older now but when they were teenagers i remember her being very uncomfortable about having to talk about adult material with her children <laughs> and, I, and i remember thinking your discomfort is not your child's problem that's a you problem right your kids, right? are gonna, your kids are gonna <laughs> fuck hopefully not too soon but they're gonna fuck because they're human beings and everybody does right and so i I suggest you get comfortable with that reality rather than play ostrich which is weird so i don't know like same thing with violence i think there's better channels for it i don't know what they used to do a thousand years ago I guess they sent young men off into war. I guess that's what we used to uh, do. That, or you use some another kind of lowbrow, like be a wrestler or yeah, yeah, <laughs> boxing and things, right? I did martial arts when I was like in junior high, and it wasn't for was me fun? because I wasn't mature. I just thought, hey, this will be instant. I'm like, no. <laughs> you like it? Uh, I don't know if I would have liked it 
it really depends. I wasn't in a mature frame of mind, and my teacher was kind of a just do or die kind of guy. So I think it really depends on your teacher yeah. and your frame of mind if you're in a good spot. But like anything, if you're not prepared to make time for it, it's not going to be worth it anyway. So. Well, yeah, everything take and martial arts take years and years to get really good, right? I mean, that's a that's a long game. I still have respect for it, and I. I will call out people who are pretending to say, I know how to, you know, I know Kung Fu. I'm like, you took one class, asshole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, calm down. Which one did you, um, which one did you study? Oh, I'm sure it was just like a beginner uh, self-defense. Did. That's cool. My dad did judo when he was young. Oh, so he's going he to the... a lot of grappling. I don't know. I never took it. But... I think it is a mixture of that. And uh, I have much respect for anyone who can do Krav Maga and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but Every once in a while, you'll see an announcer who's introducing someone, and you can tell they don't know the different styles apart, and they're unintentionally kind of offending someone. Like, I think there was that recently. There was, like, an animated movie that was out recently, and someone uh-huh. was saying, hey, you guys, how do you like playing these roles? But he clearly thought they were live action. He was like, oh, no, really? we're playing cartoon characters. We're in a voice booth. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, we did not actually. It's not me. That's um. I had a girlfriend in high school who became a black belt in Taekwondo, like the one where you like kick people in the head. I mean, Ooh. she was real, real athletic. She was a track athlete. She was a gifted athlete in general. Sounds like a mixture of kickboxing. Don't quote me on that, but yeah, something like that. It was. I took two Krav Maga classes. Oh, sweet! In, in California, and I sucked, of course. But <laughs> kind of made me want to see if I like, because I've never been in a physical fight. I'm not going to win at my size. I don't want to fight. Be, as many violent action movies as I've watched or yeah. outrageous horror films, I have, what what do I want to fight for? <laughs> have you ever like actually gotten in a fight? No, I've been pretty good at just getting like, just like kind of smart. Uh, I was in yeah. kindergarten as far back. And I remember someone just stamped over, stomped over me. And so that was my kind of opening to the world where I was like, yeah, I kind of, I don't trust anyone in this world. That was like my, I was little and my older sister was, bigger. <laughs> she's still taller. She's 5'11". I'm 5'6". And uh, so I was a big biter because that's all I had. <laughs> um, and I would bite her right. I mean, not like now. I'm a snake. When I was four, <laughs> not, I didn't do this last week, but um, I would bite her right in the ass, right in the butt cheek. <laughs> and, uh, it was a solid self-defense move. <laughs> oh my God. That's great. Yeah, I, my parents had to call me off after a while. Like I you couldn't be the kid who bites everybody. I got in trouble for my brother is four years younger than me and he can kick my ass because people he's bigger than me. So people are like, oh, he's your older brother. I'm like, shut the fuck up. He's not my older brother. But That's, uh, he, grew he, more, yeah. he always gets me in a hell. But one thing I am always good at doing is headbutting him. OK. You and I had, I had to be told, stop that. That could literally, you know. I mean, your brother, that's who you get to pummel. That's the rule. In life. <laughs> like that was my only weapon. <laughs> Just headbutt the shit out of him. We were, I mean, old sisters. We were two and a half years apart. And my parents had an apartment in Hawaii. We lived in. Oh, Hawaii. so it's already a crib space. <laughs> well, it was just a four hour flight. So we, a lot of Californians go over to Hawaii a lot, sure. like Mexico, because it's not that far. Why not? So <laughs> they went off to like go run errands. And we were, I don't know, 10 and 12, just little preteen jerks, you know. <laughs> she wanted to play ten- volleyball and I wanted to play tennis at like the little apartment, you know, tennis court and volleyball thing on the beach. And we couldn't agree on which one to play, but we couldn't do either one of them without the other, right? And it descended into such a fight that she went in the kitchen and grabbed one of the knives. Now, she didn't try to come after me, but she was brandishing it like, you're going to play volleyball with me, bitch. And uh, my dad comes back to the apartment, and we're standing there crying, and she's got the kitchen, the cake knife. And uh, nice. he asks what happened. And we explain that it's a fight in Hawaii over whether we play tennis or volleyball. And he forever called us the Jewish American princesses, like for the next 20 years. He was, <laughs> this, is what I, this is what I work so fucking hard for is for you guys to stab each other over <laughs> which sport you're going to play in Hawaii, you spoiled jerks. Oh, uh, parents always take it so personally. It's like, this doesn't. It wasn't about you guys. It's not, it really doesn't show on you. It's only, people only take this personally if you are like, insulting you're like where'd you get that motor mouth from right well siblings you know it's good for us right <laughs> yeah my sister i got outed um as i mean i've done lots of other things graduate school and science and worked in oil and done other but 
the sex work part of my life, I had a stalker and he outed me and that does that dissolved my family relationship for two years. They didn't speak to me and to lose your family, even, you know, your brother that you pummel or your sister that you bite, uh, you think you're okay, but it's like losing your anchor in the ocean. Mm. Um, and when we all finally reconciled and they've, they've decided to love me, even given my choices, which is a grace I don't deserve and can't repay. Uh, we don't talk about what I do. They hate it, but they love me. And, uh, so I'll never, I'll never bite her again because she's still nice to me, even given the shame I've brought my family. And when I had the stalker, she said, did you ever think about us? Did you, you know, cause sometimes stalkers go after your family to hurt you. Luckily mm. this person, this person did not. But the truth is I had not thought about that. I was young and wild and greedy and dumb. And I did not think about other people. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. Right. So. Fair enough. I mean, we all learned to just kind of, think outside the box yeah as you hopefully you mature and luckily nothing happened with the stalker but um well i put him in prison and now he's rebuilt his life and so far so good but uh it uh yeah your actions touch other people in ways that sometimes you can't predict right yeah maybe that's good it keeps you from going postal or doing anything that's too bad i would hope it does well hopefully you should anyway but for me like it's it's good to think about family right oh, probably probably should have 20 years ago but hey oh well <laughs> so uh as a fun transition uh you said it before you're a big entertainment hound a big uh sure. film buff and you just yeah. starred on compound media and gunning the sacred cow they're <laughs> a fun collective um yeah uh how did you get into uh movies and tv growing up other well than I mean, i've always been a fan myself my sister has a master's degree in film theory. Um, my father's from Europe, and and we grew up watching all oh. the old musical stuff. He's he's an immigrant to America, and he loves America more than those of us who were just born here, and that's all we know. So this sort of um, nice. the golden age stuff, like Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, like all those American musicals. I mean, that was our fodder. Like, Sweet. Um, and uh, I, I, I love Bollywood movies. I think they're sort of innocent and lovely and they always have they are fun. <laughs> and they have intermissions and they're so long. Um, <laughs> and uh, I do like stuff that scares you. Sometimes the, the, the real gory stuff starts to be a little silly, yeah. but I like, I like mysteries and creepy ones. Cause man, they make you hang on. It's like mental chewing gum, right? Mm -hmm. When yeah. you want to, catch the killer you want to know what happened you're looking around your corner even though you know it's a movie <laughs> sure what was and it, that <laughs> um and yeah i mean so i had a very stressful year in 2017 everything ended up fine but i remember asking my mom like okay i gotta slog through something that's gonna take a few months there's no fast forward button it's stressful it'll be fine mm. but how do i get through these months and she said go to big screen movies when you can, when you have a couple of hours, go for it. It is such a great dropout, especially the big screen. I missed it so much in COVID because you can't look at your phone or you no. shouldn't, <laughs> unlike, unlike at home, right? Yeah. And, and the sound is better. And the, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the theater, the, the, a live movie theater, I, I still do it alone often um, because it's dropping out from reality. And I always turn the lights off. I'm like, game time. When, when you watch oh, it home. Yeah, totally. I'm just like, might as well get the experience here. You know, I've got sure. the 1080. <laughs> well, and obviously I've, I've modeled and and um, then it became social stuff, which was always behind the scenes video. And it's not really acting, but it's a little bit of acting. Um, totally. And you so appreciate I, the work that goes into it more. It's, it's like, sure. it's not just me that shows up, you know, and the person oh. who clears the checks <laughs> i'm the least the talent is the least important least talented person i think usually at least in modeling you're literally just standing there because you it you're a happy accident <laughs> of good genetics and time but um the crew what they can create the uh is spectacular so every time i do a shoot i'm it's pleasure to be around crew and see mm -hmm. what they can do so um oh and don't get me wrong i mean a cinematographer is very invaluable but if they're one with a big head, definitely do a background check. Make sure they're not the kind that, you know, really takes over a set from a director or, you know, it's just. Are some of them unsufferable? They're just. 
oh yeah there, there are definitely some who just are talking so much smack that shot looks bad i'm like you're just saying that because you didn't shoot it asshole you know it's just like <laughs> come on stanley kubrick liked to make his actors like actually scared or actually miserable like he wanted the emotions to yeah i don't understand that at all i it's just like dude they are here for you but there's a limit you know Sure, you can't and I'm not that. talking smack about method actors either. I mean, there's some who obviously go too far, but if you're just talking in character as the character, I get it. You know, that makes sense. Sure. <laughs> you're sure. Treating it like a brand. Well, and so much, so many stars, like th- they're basically a commodity. We're going to watch Tom Cruise be Tom Cruise sometimes, or mm-hmm. Julia Roberts was always Julia Roberts. <laughs> But I yeah. like it when I like it when they lose themselves more. I like it when the actor disappears more. Oh, absolutely. I speaking of sex work, I always love it when I see some show like SVU or Criminal Minds and the villain of that episode happens to be a former sitcom star or dramatic actor, and you're like, see? <laughs> Played you for yeah. a fool. <laughs> the, when Kevin Costner did that great movie where he's a murderer, Mr. Mr. Brooks. Yeah. So I lo- I know I probably doesn't I don't know what the Rotten Tomatoes on it but I are on it but I love that movie. And no, Dane Cook gets point. killed. You're like you can't kill Dane Cook, but he but they do. Sorry spoilers <laughs> if anybody's sorry if you're listening to this and you haven't watched that movie I just ruined it for you. Well not really. But I mean in all fairness, I mean some sometimes these movies you should totally spoil them because then it makes people want to actually watch them and then you can examine it beyond the twist. I find that if you can examine it be- beyond the colorful plot twist it's actually a better movie than you give it credit for versus, hey, that's the billion, you know, seven or six cents knockoff, you know. Good point. And well, and what was so interesting to me is this affable Kevin Costner. You never see him like that. No, even Demi Moore. I've never seen her play a detective like that. I've never seen William Hurt be a eagle, uh, evil, like ego headed side of someone's split persona, you know. Well, and I obviously I'd be afraid of a movie where a sex worker was like abjectly evil. But there was that recent TV show with Elvis's granddaughter. Is it his granddaughter? His niece? Oh, um, oh God. What it was, was that. Show, and it was called. Um, I just wrote it down for this. Girlfriend Experience. Right? Oh, yeah. Based on the Soderbergh show. And I think he's involved yeah. with the show, too. But yeah, no, I, I no, know what you mean. No, that's a different one. Um, Riley. Oh but but I. Uh, yeah, I know Riley Coe. Well, so she's not like great. She's not. Um, she's not like a perfect. Yeah, the girlfriend. She's uh kind of n- imperfect. She's kind of an asshole. She's kind of, and I think I liked it because that's how people really are, right? But I know what you mean. It, you, it is always an effort to try and make sure the stereotype doesn't become too cartoonish or make people think that's how most. Uh, I, I get very annoyed when I see that there's a white savior or there is the sure. woman is only the damsel and can't defend herself without the guy. And it's like, well, you're sending a message, even if you don't mean it. <laughs> when people mimic media. I mean, I think Pretty Woman was probably really good for our business in the 90s. Yeah. Because every guy wanted to have his Richard Gere fantasy, and that was great for our business. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, if they make a movie where where the sex worker is like some garbage person that's probably not great for our industry <laughs> I, yeah but that's not yeah, i mean let's say they're a supporting character i want to make sure they're not the only negative influence in the person's life or only yeah. the criminal informant it's like well you're kind of saying something about that even though sure it's um, all backfire well and americans like things neatly tied up like they really do even though them. isn't it funny how some of them are the same ones who hate it when it is all mm-hmm. neatly tied up, they're like, oh, it's formulaic. I'm like, well, you asked for the happy ending. So. <laughs> sure, but they do those test uh, screenings, and uh, particularly Americans, they hate. I read the uh, original ending of Pretty Woman. Yeah, it was originally a dark movie for, yeah, like, they, trauma. They just part ways. He dumps her, and she's back on the street. Like, and that's the end of the movie, which is far more accurate, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, you know, usually that's the guy does not come in his limo to pick you up from the hood, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but it was essentially turned into Cinderella. Okay, fine, but um, well, my, what's your take on Flashdance? I, I, I know it's not it's not a sex worker movie by any stretch of the mind, but it does bring up to mind how someone wants to be a dancer. It's kind of a footloose type story, 
in a very sleazy world. And that I writer mean, did other movies later, like Showgirls, which is a satire, but a lot of people take legit serious. You know? Is the worst movie ever made. And it's, it's really shitty. Don't movie. get me wrong. It's a bad movie. And I love Verhoeven, but that movie, I've tried rewatching it and I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, that act, what's her name in Showgirls? Oh, like, uh, Liz Berkeley, yeah. Uh, I mean, the only better piece of acting she ever did was in Saved by the Bell, where she act like took too many like diet pills. Yeah. <laughs> like she just poor thing. But she was lovely. I mean, the dancing, the shape she got in, all handed to her. She went to her trainer. Uh, too many cooks in the kitchen too. Like, because you are seeing so many people who act like they're in a crappy, you know, like late night HBO movie, and then you see other people in it who are taking it very campy. I'm like, so again, no one was giving the right direction on how to approach this whole subject matter. <laughs> so I think they did more. And there was a, the one actress, uh, the black gal who gets assaulted, uh, Jean Rivera. Like, she almost gave up acting because she apparently, the actor accidentally socked her in the face during that scene. Oh, really? And she's already in the acting zone, so that really traumatized her. That She hasn't really done much. She had a brief recurring role on uh, the TV show The Closer, which I recommend everybody, but and which, believe it or not, actually does bring up with a uh, male prostitution subplot. For really? One character. Yeah, they... they they have a character who's basically selling his uh, body on the street, and they he's get the gay for pay, so to speak, and he's having to get away from his attackers and other people who are molesting him sometimes for free. Oh God! But they were also very careful about that, just showing, hey, you know, he's he has a choice in this whole thing, and yeah. Ryan Murphy's Pose season one did a great the the transgender sex worker who started on the piers and. Found oh. a great delivery. I loved that. That um, I didn't realize it dealt with that. I'd only seen clips from that, so it's good. And the treatment of somebody who's not at the high end, not privileged, uh, and transgender, and like the very nice affection between her and a client, and how he reckons with being attracted to somebody transgender when that's he didn't know that about himself, and how he feels. Um, it is not- always so wild. I will always see that. I will see someone looking at a model, and then they find out later after the fact oh that's but he or she used to be him or her and it's like oh come on beauty is beauty (laughs) it's a very i've had clients who were very curious about having that experience but couldn't often couldn't deal with the self-shame and i don't know whether the one i'm thinking of in particular i don't know whether he ever did it or checked it off his life bucket list or didn't i hope he did because he wanted to but he had lots of shame about it, which was a bummer. Yeah. I mean, I just would like the spandex from Flashdance to come back. That's all I'll say about like, right. <laughs> I mean, oh my God, the eighties, right? Like I was born at the very end of the seventies. And so I was an eighties kid and the outfits, like, I think it was based on a real girl, a real woman. Yeah. Who- the Esther Haas <laughs> guy said on all of those movies that he was, he just kept, for the so-called research, he would actually encounter various real-life people, but at the same time, he's just like, well, some of that's going to be lost in the shelf and you're going to have to take with a grain of salt. And I have an ex- a friend who's an exotic dancer in Long Island, and who, she was a UCLA professor. She was. Interesting. She's brilliant, and she same cons- very conservative life, you know, obeying all the rules. You can't do that. <laughs> he's having a lot of fun. She's like, 38 now and she was like i want to be sexy and explore that side of my life before i get old instead of repress it and deny yourself any joy or life she's didn't learning the pole dancing and all that stuff and she's right now having fun and i i hope she's safe and has a great time she's but uh i don't, I don't know flash dance i mean the follow your dreams thing is kind of nice that she's like chasing a dream there's nothing wrong with that yeah, uh, I, I did the plot him for actually not showing any actual sex because I feel like that's all that movie would have been remembered for. Yes. Probably. Versus the whole get out of the gutters and into a better lifestyle. <laughs> well, this, this sort of whore with a heart of gold, right? The stripper with a heart of gold or, or sex worker of any kind, porn stars. Mm-hmm. I have met many porn stars. They're some of the most refreshing people I've ever met because when somebody is putting it all out there, there's nothing left to hide or lie about. They're yeah, okay. uh, that's what I always found so funny when you see saw some of them trying to become Congress people. Is like, really? What can you say to embarrass me? Yeah, they have no shame, and it's actually kind of nice. Like, Might even get you elected. 
number one I met and I had just become a companion and I was still in that beginning of like, nobody knew. I didn't think I would get outed. And I was like, I'm only going to do this for a little while. And you know, I'm not like all the rest. I was still stupid like that. And she just laughed. She's like, you love dating. You love traveling with rich guys. Like you're not just going to do this for a little while. She's like, no, <laughs> you're like to win it. well, she yeah. knew me better than I knew myself. And she was right. But, uh, I don't, nice. I think, and, and a lot of dancers are sort of nice ethical people who have dreams and it's a means to an end. I think that recent movie, it was very good hustlers with Jennifer Lopez. Those dancers yeah. were not the best people. And, you know, in real life, they got in a lot of legal trouble for what they did as, as they should, you can't drug clients. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I know it's a satire. I had trouble getting through it, but I understand the appeal of it. I will say the final song they danced to Whitney Houston's I want to dance. I thought that was very that was perfect for the satire. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's a heist movie, essentially, right? Right. <laughs> Ramona is a garbage person. She's yeah. has no morals. But in the same chain, in the same vein of like Wolf of Wall Street, you're not supposed to like her. You're supposed to be fascinated by her. Although know? I will admit that Hustler does a good job of just reminding you what you're in for without having to remind any of the trolls in the audience. Although I will say I. My issue with Wolf of Wall Street was I, I had already seen just so many movies about gamblers and tycoons and uh, yeah. stockbrokers. And I think my issue is I don't feel like they were successful at showing that he was garbage. You know he's garbage, but they make him, they make all those people so cool at being awful. So I'm just like, what are you trying to do? Like, I don't know. I, I'm watching the show Suits now, and I'm seeing some of those people who are having to debate when. It's very clear cut that you wouldn't want to be any of these people, but they all have truths and they all have severe flaws. <laughs> yeah. Sure. With their yeah. business and legal practice. One well, finance, you know, I live in Manhattan. It's the, the <laughs> insane breed. I mean, the numbers, right? It's it's just. And then when you see politicians at some of those <laughs> Wall Street places, and you're like, yeah, they're going to start inflating some numbers, aren't they? <laughs> saying the level of greed the world is not enough for these types of egos and so to see him go down was a bit satisfying right oh yeah yeah you want to see any of these guys go down uh, all the madoffs <laughs> other guys in the world well and many of them i don't know i think uh, i don't know what drives them i guess ego or most of them have a fair number of too women. big to fill maybe it's just never enough i think did you see the um was it a tv show or movie the um Call Me. It was about Heidi Fleiss. It was, Did I see that? It wasn't that great. It was Jamie Lynn Sig Siegler? Siegler. She was in The Sopranos. Oh, yeah. I heard about it, but I, I didn't see it. But yeah, I knew she played Miss Fleiss. Yeah. It was about, it was basically biographical about how Heidi Fleiss became who she did. Mm -hmm. It was flattering because Heidi Fleiss is sort of crashed and burned, right? <laughs> yeah. Not so but, much about the sex work. Her problem was drugs, right? That's what I kind of. It's kind of like uh, the various uh, shock jock DJs and everything. You, you never know who's going to be kind of the main face for that time frame. Sure. There's another um, movie about sex work. What? No, TV show? Movie? TV show. It was Jennifer Love Hewitt, and it's called Client List. It was on like it was like a Lifetime type of movie. And she was a good Texas woman who started giving happy endings at a massage parlor. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's very cute. Jennifer Love Hewitt is adorable, as always. Um, nice. But it almost, like, I I don't think it was, it like, all her clients were, like, these gorgeous muscle-bound guys. Like, first of all, that's not true. And it was, in, it was a real place in Sugarland, Texas. Oh, that her wow. husband was unemployed. And, yeah, it, like, almost glorifies it, like. It's mm. it's so good for her. Like nothing bad ever happens, and I don't know. It only went, I think, two seasons. And this is where it's so hard when you're doing a movie with a colorful profession, and it's like I want to keep it in the gray area, you know, to show well, reality. But someone gets yeah. attached one way or the other. Uh, there's the TV show Power. Have you seen that yet? No, it's good. Uh, it's the same kind of deal night nightclub owner and technically not and not doing anything wrong with the nightclub but he's got crime connections <laughs> it's good i think it if anything it does a good job of showing how 
there's really so many uh, both he and his wife are cheating on each other and then to make it even more awkward the various district attorneys are doing illegal things just to get a case so it's kind of just showing you how it just after a while it's back to the whole do as I say, not as I do. Like everybody's breaking the rules. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I hope that's not too true to reality, although it probably is. Yeah, I doubt there's any current New York gang that's wanted by both the Mexican cartels and the Serbian mob, but what do I know? <laughs> yeah, hopefully not right now. Yeah. I mean, politics, my sister works in politics and she says it's a shark pit and there are so many people like sleeping around and having affairs and yes quite a quite a bit of drug use like it's it's a lot of shenanigans in, <laughs> too, i mean as in every world every yeah. world man and it it's funny how it intervenes with said other world and then like five other parts of the world that you never thought would connect to the other <laughs> well, and you know you've been crew like long hours on film sets a lot of people end up hooking up because you're especially if you're on location somewhere far away for like six months like mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you're stuck together and you're, it's, it happens. A lot of stuff happens because you're just, it's just access. You're just there with each other, right? There, there you go. Here you become closer to that person. Yeah. And then you part ways when the job is done. And it was like this weird little, I had a very hot photographer like 10 years ago in New York. Lucky for me, he was gay. So nothing could happen, even if I had wanted it to. <laughs> it probably would have. It makes it easier. Yeah. Ian Cutler, he ended up getting an Emmy for stills. He worked, he did still photography for some TV show. I can't remember what, but he was so talented and he passed away. He went, he raced his car, uh, got very successful, made a bunch of money, bought like a Lambo or Ferrari. And he raced his car with somebody down the West Side Highway and he crashed and died young. Sorry. Um, yeah, like five years ago, Ian Cutler, he was hot, so hot. <laughs> And this photo shoot was, you know, a little bit sexy-ish, lingerie and big stuff like that at the Soho house. And <laughs> it had been on the table. I got my wires crossed because we, you know, the shoot was kind of a sexy theme and he was good looking. And I mean, he was not interested, but uh, I would have been. So, and I knew like, it's just my wires getting crossed because we're having like a sexy day. And I know this is a shoot. It's not reality. There's like crew here. There's makeup and hair people and but somehow I I had, and the photos came out great because the look on my face, because I spent the day basically a little horny. It was weird. <laughs> Very odd. And it was harmless. Nothing, nothing happened. But uh, I remember that, like, I don't know, the crew probably got How can it. you forget it? You know, it's just, it's embedded. The crew didn't appreciate me like being sleazy, but I didn't do anything. I don't, hopefully they didn't know. But. Yeah. When, when people are just giving looks, I, I don't know why people get so bothered by looks though. It's like, it, uh, do I, can eyes kill people now just, yeah, just with a stare <laughs> and sure they worked with this guy all the time i'm sure he got hit on everywhere he went as long as it's not a stink eye who cares <laughs> yeah, i mean it's fine i didn't a lot of photographers like oh i had to pay a makeup artist i gave her 200 dollars to like not leave me for a few hours after a shoot for a couple hours after a shoot as we packed up because the photographer was trying to get me alone after shooting that is very wise just to root out the creeps and uh he still hates yeah. me he's blocked me across all socials his photos were fine they weren't that good but he kept he spent the whole shoot telling me all these how all these women want to fuck him and blah 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 i was like oh like, if there's a if there's any douchebag and he's on facebook please let me know i'm happy to report him yeah. and block him off the air no i won't say it out here but no uh, that's a good idea because dude, dude's an uh, idiot I, I am in some of those modeling groups and every once in a while i i, I that's a good point. That's actually a wonderful segue. I was, there was this one, I think it was like DFW, but it was also like an international one. And one of the admins was doing a really good job. He, uh, two other gals and one other guy, and they were just all like bringing up some people. It's like, you got, you got complaints about them, list them here. So they are not in this group and we report them. And it, it, it was a very friendly group, but there was at least like one or two where someone was like, really? Him? I haven't heard anything bad. I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe he wasn't sleazy or shitty on your shoot, but if 500 people complain, you know, you got to take that into consideration. You know? Well, word gets around and, you know, you're a professional, but like the GWC. Oh, so are you, but yeah, this is well, interesting. The guy with the camera, that's happened 
when I did modeling as a teenager, it was a real profession. And then the, you got these GWCs, like guy with a camera who's like, oh, I can use this to like meet hot people. And mm. uh, yeah, word gets around pretty quick. And the good ones, like Ryan Dwyer in, in California, who shot me a million times. His wife is hotter than any model. He totally loves her. He's like this mellow stoner surf bum. He uh. makes you feel great and he never, ever gets creepy. He's around hot chicks all day, every day. He didn't care. And that's why he does so well in the business because he's completely trustworthy and he's so nice and he's not a sleaze bag. Uh, I, that's he, wonderful to hear. That gives me yeah. some hope for the human race. <laughs> right, the, good ones, the good ones are really good and they know like not to do that crap. Don't be a he bitch. <laughs> uh, I mean, I just hope we really just get to this point. Like if I do a movie set uh, production in the future, I'm going to have like some behind the scenes guides so that way, you know, we can not only have some behind the scenes stuff ready to go, but we can also have someone reporting anyone who's not doing the right thing. And you have that to back you up in court. Yeah, sure. When people uh, know that they're on film. This cameraman touched the lead star's ass. That <laughs> That's an instant fire. And if their lawyer, their lawyer has no case. <laughs> yeah, people behave better when they know that they're like, I like to fly planes and there's a black box. Oh, really? Yeah, and it records, it overlays the last like half hour. And when you know that you're being recorded, you you're less likely to say stupid stuff, right? It's good. Keep it to the small talk and like yeah, if people on set know that I mean they should know everybody has a camera phone nowadays. They should be behaving anyway, but Oh, I mean, that's I think that's been a plus with all the protests. Yeah, turn into riots and other BLM stuff. You're just saying, okay, no, this guy legit did not read your rights and yep. acted like a thug when they're a public figure. You know. <laughs> yeah, how many people were probably killed by bad people and there was no video evidence back there then? There was no trial and you're like, uh, so we got away with murder. So yep. he or she's going to do it again. Sure, I'm sure it happened all the time. And I know who was that nurse who got shot. It wasn't Trayvon Martin and it was a female... Oh, Brianna. Brianna Taylor, yeah. And it's just heartbreaking. I'm like, she arrived to a scene. And right. then this other gal came up and shot her in the face. And it's like, well, how could you even mistake her? Yeah. I mean, and they're trying stuff like turning off their body cameras. And they, of course, the, the, the disgusting thing in this country is qualified immunity that when they do things that are wrong, you cannot sue them. You cannot sue a prosecutor, a DA. Um, you can... There's rare, rare occasions where you can like get file Brady motions, which goes in their file and nobody even gives a shit. But qualified immunity is disgusting that they are yeah. above the law, literally. Especially with the lobbyists. They're like, yeah, it's going to be thrown out. Another worker's death on an oil rig. That don't matter. I'm like, well, well, should. What lawyer is going to go after them? Because they sort of need each other. They're all in the same business. They're all in court mm -hmm. every day together. Um, and also what judge is going to side against them because you can't win an election and become a judge without the police union donations to your campaign. <laughs> yeah. So judges that bias. never side against them. I know mm. I live in LA and they, one year I looked up the statistics of people who had sued LAPD and it was like, I don't know, 469 case five lawsuits that year. Do you know how many were, who were won? how many of those cases were won by the citizen? Uh, probably five out of. 500 zero zero and it's that every year no one wins almost ever it's like one in like seven years the citizen that, that's garbage no, um you cannot win basically I, the young turks did a cool survey i, I don't want to use cool but uh just they, they did a uh classification of like uh when there was a lot of copaganda saying oh we're in danger we have a dangerous job and it's like uh there was like like 10 cop deaths and like three sevenths of them were by other dirty cops killing other cops who were snitching on them I'm like yeah see yeah literally so like being, dangerous. The, being the like 7-eleven guy late at night is far more dangerous being a crab fisherman is far more dangerous right like, it's, it's actually not that dangerous of a job it, even if you're going by some of the homeless who aren't in their right mind like you just walk across the street to the next area you, you should be fine and i love that versus someone who's charging you and you got to use self-defense and they make these very fast decisions with very little information. So they get, so they make bad decisions. Cause yeah, I don't, yeah. The whole thing is, I mean, in other countries don't have this problem. So we know it can be done better because there are places that do right. 
it's not impossible but i mean don't get me started on the the sex worker stings it's so creepy and voyeuristic i heard a rumor actually like, here you in on somebody's sex life and then deciding who can when two consenting adults the government gets to decide whether or not those two people can agree to fuck each other like get the fuck out of my bedroom like last i checked i own my body the state doesn't yeah I, it's who just, i want when i want for what reason i want as long as i'm not forcing the other party to fuck me because that would be rape right then correct government it's, go away it's so it's, voyeuristic it's creepy it is almost as bad as uh uh preventing certain drug use let alone who can be married and gay and of course yeah. don't get me started on abortion but it's uh, i did hear a rumor here in dallas that that there's often are a lot of streetwalkers seen in that area off a of regal row by some other production studios and everything and i did hear a rumor for a while that there were cops that were letting it go on and so then that gets you thinking okay is one of them the clients you know many times they know in oakland there was that famous case where they were all gangbanging this one particularly adorable little one in in return for protecting New her orleans wow uh oakland california o oakland california yeah they all got fired thank god but she, and she stood up yeah for her. it's it very predatory it. right because it's like it okay so her. what if she refuses you're gonna arrest her well that's how you usually you end up dead right oh, that's garbage that said um Fucking God, when i had that stalker the phoenix pd saved my life they did not like me they so the stalker was a pimp who wanted to make money off me. And I said, no, you, I don't want that. And you're not going to do that to me. But that's what happens in my business when you're pretty and marketable. Sometimes people want to make money off you. And me and my big old mouth, when when this pimp wanted that, I told him to fuck off, which I probably should have just ignored him. But I didn't know who I was messing with, right? Stupid. So he wanted to harm me. Um, that happens a lot. Um, and the Phoenix PD, they they put him in prison. So. I'm good on him. Well, I don't know what to make of that. I don't think they cared that much about me. I think they wanted him because he was also like doing other bad stuff. Oh, so he was already like a serial criminal who'd already. Yeah, guns and raping people and running girls. And he was a bad, he was a bad dude. So uh, he'd already had multiple offenses. So he was already a state priority. But I know what you mean, where it's like they're not actually saving you. And I do feel like a lot of people do that propaganda. It's like they don't have any, they don't care about, they want to just avoid having to do paperwork on a body count. Yeah, I think he, um, when we met, when me and my lawyers met with them, I was convinced they were going to maybe harm me in some way, but they didn't. Which oh, I'm like sure. use you as like a fall guy or something? Yeah, something, you know. But he they, or she enabled this asshole. It's like, no. It was like my <laughs> boyfriend or something. I was like, dude, I have never met this person. I swear I do not know him. But I guess usually it's some kind of. Passing a, by someone at a nightclub, does that make them your boyfriend? You know? He was on the internet. I never met him. I didn't even know uh, his name was David Elms, and I didn't know he was Vietnamese until I saw the mugshot. Thought he was a white yes. guy. You know. But, uh, but so I'm hoping OnlyFans actually opens this up and realizes how sex work crosses over so many different patterns, so many different areas, much like <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> well, people are always going to want access to good-looking young sexy people i don't think that's gonna plus change. if they can do it from their private studio slash home there you go they don't have to work for the man anymore <laughs> you know, i think it's been covid kind of democratized it in a big way i know right <laughs> made so much off only fans they're no longer going back to in-person work and so they are safer um, i had leslie zen who was actually one of our first guests here on the show and she talked about how like that's just all she does because she never signed with any label nice and totally independent. She's completely independent. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and and she was also, you know, people would often, of course, mockingly back in the two thousands when everyone was derogatory, they she often got the tough bitch label, and it's like, well, yeah, she wants to be in, be out, and not have this take all day, and again, not have to work for some, be contracted for some company that won't let you work for some other, you know, internet company. No, I don't want to be owned. <laughs> right. So can I ask you, I wanted to ask you, since I got the chance to meet you and I've listened to so many of your episodes, when you are okay. part of a movie that's like really scary, do you guys have to like take breaks and have laughs over craft services and like, or are you actually scared or is it totally not scary because you're on set and it's not? Uh, yeah, that's just it because there's no music and you're messing with the lighting. You're kind of, 
Okay. You're basically playing a god. My my issue has just always been uh, me and my pal Nathaniel, who I still help out on some festival shorts or PSAs when I can. Okay. Uh, it we were dealing with this one prick who just we the the pain in our asses is, is just getting all the paperwork. There's always someone who's got twenty different reasons and is like, uh, uh-uh, uh, sign or don't. Stop having yeah. us be the good guy. No one is forcing you to work on this movie. But if you can't sign this, you're the same troublemaker who's going to do the whole take my name off it or you can't release this because I'm involved with it. It's like, it's just paperwork just indicates, hey, everyone, all parties agreed. And regardless of whether you want to be associated with this or not, you worked on it and you're not going to prevent this, you know, picture from getting completed and all the other people's work. But we had this one guy, he was like a, recommended boom mic operator and sound recorder and he was just refusing to sign any of this and we were just trying to get ahead of the curb and I'm like yes yeah, you signed up and then he finally was like fine i'll sign it but we were just up to here with this like okay well if he's exploding on us over email <laughs> he, he's probably not going to be good so I, ironically the day we were finally fed up with him he had just finally given us his paperwork and then we saw him talking some smack about us and he deleted it after five minutes but uh, we took a screenshot of it because we're like okay so what did we do wrong we asked you to sign your paperwork yeah so petty (laughs) and then (laughs) uh, i asked the other colleagues and they're like oh we never had an issue with him he was quiet i'm like well (laughs) could have fooled me because it's very colorful here (laughs) what his problem was what a weirdo no it's insane i'm not fucking interested right now i don't like how you're i don't like your face i don't want to i don't want to be involved okay cool we won't work together. Sure. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. <sighs> I mean, it takes all kinds, you know, nobody can like everybody. Thank you. Yeah. The, and people change. There there might be someone who's like, yeah, they were very talkative and trying to force a friendship on someone. I, I never understand that. It's like, let's see if we work well together before we decide to become Facebook friends, you know? Yeah. Like, ch- calm down. Like. And the fake charisma, there's uh, there's so much of that in Dallas. The fake charisma. And they yeah, never stop like acting when the cameras are off. Ugh. It's got to be exhausting to like not be a real person, right? Uh, I couldn't live a lie. <laughs> LA, LA's full of those people. Dallas, too. There's that. I'm sure there's plenty of other places in Atlanta or Miami. I like definitely New York's great. They're not nice and they don't pretend to be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'm like every Please day. Stop. <laughs> Yeah, just four letter words, like, and then they, and then it goes by, but yeah, it's interesting. So yeah, it's not really, you're right. Music is so much of a film, especially horror. Like it's not uh, nearly as scary without the soundtrack and the Foley and all the other stuff. There's that, you're, you're but if there's anything, people should just definitely be on a film set and just realize, Hey, there's a reason why some of these guys lose their brain. If they got nothing going on and they're on set all day, <laughs> you're going to detect it. You know, you're, you're going to see it. And it, it just was interesting to me how you have to create all that lighting. You know, ah. that yeah. that that is not there. Like, uh, there's a, a wonderful French movie I think from Jack, stars Jacqueline Bisset from the '70s called Day for Night. Oh, yeah. talking about that whole thing you're filming nighttime at during the day vice versa sure Creating and, rain. they had to do they had to um singing in the rain with gene kelly that's like milky water because regular water didn't show up as rain right you you have to use milky. all kinds of alternates <laughs> funny that it's, it's breaking character too like this one of the scariest things i, I went on a haunted hayride in Griffith Park Zoo, they do that every year for Halloween in Los Angeles. And there's lots of good actors in LA, of course, like every big city. Oh, sweet. And we're on the back of this hayride. And uh, my friend was quite well dressed. He wore like a three piece suit from Zara. He looked really cute. And this zombie guy, he's acting and he's got the fake chainsaw and he's running after us with the fake chainsaw, like rawr, screaming. And he completely breaks character for two seconds, looks at my friend Jeff and goes, Nice outfit, man. And then goes back to me. I love those kinds of stories. And it was so good. You will make friends on some of the most amateur, poorly thought out productions or ones which you want nothing to do with. And he's like, but that's how we're friends. I'm glad we had this awful experience because now we're still talking. 
When authenticity rings like nothing else, honestly, <laughs> even in sex work, most people aren't assholes and creeps. They're just seeking connection. Oh, but I saw it on TV. Uh, Amy? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, like most people want like authentic connection. It's hard to find where often we can't find mm -hmm. it. Or we can't achieve it. I'm pretty awkward, like sciencey and dorky. Welcome and to the club. I can't connect with people. <laughs> That's all anybody really wants, right? Right. Ever. <laughs> or anywhere else we're just trying to you're not gonna see it anywhere else either that's the other irony yeah, yeah you see different really... forms of awkwardness <laughs> sure I, uh i always liked writers i had the had the honor of knowing a couple of very well-known hollywood writers wrote household name stuff and they were exactly as brilliant as you would expect sweet and the way their minds worked they would like lock themselves in a hotel room for six weeks if the if the writing. I've heard of those. It's just to make the ideas finally arrive. <laughs> yeah, and then sometimes they just don't for like a month or two. There's just nothing. Uh, yeah. Just, if you know Paramount is trying to get you to write something, but uh, and you already don't want to write it. <laughs> can't imagine like writing a script and trying to make it come to life. That seems totally. It's I don't know. it's a lot. <laughs> It's, uh, and the, all the things that need to come to from like, you know, in your business, like from the getting the rights to getting it greenlit to getting, it's mm -hmm. a wonder if anything ever gets made. So many good podcasts out now that, especially if you're into true crime, that are, are good at showing real life terrors and dramatizing it very well. And with credibility, they actually reached out to the families of the deceased and the, the prosecutors. Uh, even some of the crooks got their take. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, same deal too. There's some great podcasts about the making of certain blockbusters. And you're like, it's an ama amazing that any of this even took off. <laughs> sure. Yeah. How much went wrong and how much had to happen. The one that kills me is the unsolved mysteries. It's very frustrating to me. <laughs> you're right. It's, it's, unsolved and it makes me it's like a bad criminal minds episode you're like and that's it what <laughs> right like when they're just oh what was what's that no dupont did you see that one about recently mel dubont no dupont no it was the the rich guy's family he was psycho and at the very end they had the can't the recording and he was talking to himself um, oh, oh, it was like Robert Hurst, I think. Hurst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Hurst, not DuPont. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I, I did hear about that, and uh, I don't even know why they wanted to record him, but I'm glad he's away in jail and they reopened that case. Um, the Jinx. The Jinx, that's what it was. Um, it was a while ago, like eight, seven, eight years ago. Dude, it's not jump out and like scare you kind of horror, but it's so like so creepy at the yeah. end i didn't sleep very well that night because it's it's the very end you you finally realize how crazy he really is uh, the fact that this man exists yeah yeah and it's real right yeah pretty hard to it, lie about that uh what? ray donovan also kind of talks about various shady talent agencies and how they often have the whole don't uh don't invite any girls to your hotel they might wake up you might wake up with them dead and we're gonna have to explain this sure that's not good you don't have a dead hooker in your room <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because like you're you're looking at it and you're always wondering which real life case is that inspired by and like i'm thinking that method actor refusing to come out while high on marijuana i think that's wesley snipes that one definitely a britney spears type case where they're being extorted by their business manager who's also a blood relative and then there's a few other ones where you're like that could be yeah. anyone. <laughs> it used to bug me a lot, the horror film, the real true crime. They often wanted to kill pretty women in their 20s. I'm not in my 20s anymore. But when I was, realizing that there's this subsect of men who want to torture and kill. I mean, I wasn't blonde, thank God, but my niece is. And I see her. She's 18 and blonde and tall and thin, lives in San Francisco. And the way I see some men look at her scares me. And yeah. I don't know. I guess they want to conquer this type of girl, the cheerleader is. They want to prey on the weak. Yeah, and I guess that's it, right? She's not strong. She's young and stupid, and yeah, it's an easy target. Like, mm -hmm. 
right? He always picked the ones with the ponytails. He could he could pull. Oh, absolutely! I love all the different uh, health and uh, uh, mental uh, health uh, podcasts because they pretty much all hit the nail on the head, saying the pretty much the cause of a lot of these are our various insecurities. You know, you already take the fear mongering uh, clickbait, but then when you have just people constantly just telling you, oh, this is bad and this is that. And it's like, and I fortunately, I, I, I'm i glad I never bought into any of that fear mongering. It's like all these, you know, that because insecurity is like the cause of everything from jealousy to just bullying. Sure. Yeah. And I had a deceased aunt who's fortunately no longer with us, but her husband, my uncle is also unfortunately just as bad as her, where they had a bad habit of where they were just like uh, just refusing to like acknowledge like a waiter or a pizza delivery person's existence. Oh, he wronged me. I'm like, they were late. They didn't have the or someone gave them a bad order. So, you know, they didn't do this despite you. Oh, yeah. But he is bad. He is terrible. I'm like, what? Then order from a better restaurant. You know, it's, it's like, what's the problem? It's and, and it's just amazing to me when I see people just, they don't even know the other person. They're just spiting them. And if, yeah, I, this is where I think you, the tip does the talking and just reminds someone, okay, I'll do better next time. But it's, it almost is like a teacher versus student argument, too. It's like, well, did you use your words? No. Okay. Well, then you got what you got. I mean, and yeah, it's not really about you often. Like the person's stressed out, tired. They don't make a lot of, like, give them a break. Right. Yeah. And also, have you ever, like, I don't know your aunt or uncle, but have you guys ever fucked up? Are you perfect all the time? Yeah. I don't see you got, uh, I, you well, mean? looking at their weight, they, they don't cook any of their own food anytime. You know? <laughs> I mean, I'm glad they never make mistakes, but most people make mistakes. You just give them some slack. And like you said, if it's terrible more than once or twice, okay, move on. Next, next yeah, time. leave a review. They'll take note. Um, people kind of love to feel like slighted, like they like to feel like that because they like, like to add all this extra melodrama that doesn't exist. You're just like, I don't think anyone went out of their way to do this. This is just a bad soap opera that you're painting in everybody's brain right now. You're not that important. No one actually cares. <laughs> yeah, that's. I don't know, like. They said in the turn of the century, America, most of the serial killers were women and they were poisoning their husbands, but they started getting caught, like the arsenic thing and the tea. Um, there was a lot of, like, because, you know, murder is basically a man thing. It's like, whatever, 10,000 to one. Like, I buy that, yeah. <laughs> women, then maybe that's physical strength or testosterone, whatever, whatever. But for the most part, women don't do the murdering nearly as much. But apparently, like, a long time ago, there were a lot of women poisoning their husbands. <laughs> Forensics got too good, so they had to, I guess. They had to... <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know how true that is, but they said that the serial killer trope was, was ladies back in the day. There's nurses who do, right? That happens. Weird. <laughs> wow. There's been movies about that. Eddie Redmayne movie was really good. The nurse who was. Oh, I didn't see that one. Wow. He thought he was like mercy killing. He would up their insulin and put him into a coma uh, and thought he was some kind of angel of death i guess it's based on a true story but it happens wow yeah well takes all kinds right the more you learn <laughs> that's cool that you're a film buff true so uh, likewise it's cool to know that you're seeing some cool documentaries that give you chills but at least you learn more about them that's it well and if you ever get a chance to be part of a movie about sex work tell her tell them to just make her human <laughs> please <laughs> I, I wanted to for a while actually do a documentary on slut shaming because I, I noticed it just would be cool to just know the origin of why is that like one of the first insults people do especially if the person's like not taking your money or anything you know yeah, they just like to fuck what why are you mad <laughs> yeah. just like, like, like but they'll even do it just like if there even isn't even any sex involved they're just like <laughs> oh like the way because she he did his job well, it's what am I missing here? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know if they're jealous. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it probably is jealousy. 
Yeah, the audacity of some some people don't like audacity. So the thing they hate about somebody who's sexually comfortable is like, how dare they? they how should, dare you exist and be different? <laughs> how you should have more. How dare body. you be opinionated and happy in your body and gay or whatever? <laughs> we don't really like people who like themselves, right? That makes us mad. Oh, well, look at this new Little Mermaid remake they did. It was like, okay, so. I'm not on the Disney remake bandwagon. I'm not a kid, but anyone wants parent that wants to take their kid to that, go have fun. But then you just saw so many people saying, oh my God, they yeah. changed the race. I'm like, and? What's no, the problem here? Representation matters. It's really important for little black girls to see themselves. Yeah. Representation matters, obviously. Absolutely. And I was just I like, okay, so I'm not going to support Disney's whole agenda, which is trying to keep you know, the license and yeah. make a buck off someone but anyone who wants to see that because they identify with it or want a fantasy film to show their minority daughter that's cool but it's just like okay but what and then it just irks me when i see some of these people just saying I, i'm equal rights but i got a problem with this I'm like so i don't believe you please tell me a compelling argument <laughs> oh outrage the hardest the hardest thing in the world is to like live and let live right it's hard for me i'll be in starbucks and just judge a bitch for because i don't like her yoga pants and she doesn't even know i'm standing behind her that's how crazy <laughs> yeah. you can be in my head in an invisible fight with her and she's not even she has her earbuds in and doesn't know i exist because I... we do we like to control other people because we're infants we're just all infants oh how dare we exist well you know mother nature will have had it with us at some point so until i think that's what COVID was response to is like yeah you talk to people you gotta die <laughs> <laughs> maybe she'll, she'll come going back. away <laughs> that's right finally we might deserve it maybe hey, yeah. you know anyone not washing their hands uh, see you see you next time <laughs> natural selection at work right <laughs> <laughs> karma right so Oh, well, so this has been delightful having you on. Uh, anything you want to promote? Any blog? Any site? My, um, yeah, if anybody, yeah. Any my modeling social... portfolio? Yeah, I saw that my... you had one. I do. My socials are Amy Taylor NYC. And um, yeah, I'll be on some stuff in the coming, in the next uh, couple months after the holidays. So uh, yeah, people can check that out. And, and my nonsense ramblings, or they can ignore them, whatever they like. And uh, so... And I'll be looking That's not for nonsense. <laughs> oh, oh. We love doing social topics and documentary discussions. <laughs> yeah, it's um, keep it up. Your uh, your podcasts are funny and interesting. I love them. Wow, well, hope so. We definitely have some interesting people coming up. We had one conversation that was interesting because it was about AI generated artwork, and it was like, well, just do some backstory, make sure you didn't steal someone else's likeness. That stuff is fascinating. What's coming? Yeah, and I mean, I think the strikes were enough of a message. It's like, hey, that it was okay until someone got hurt. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they have, I think actors and writers, they have a, a, a right to be scared of this AI stuff that's coming. Totally. I mean, I know many people who have been in IT, and they kind of slowly got fired, either due to office politics or just someone just saying i'd rather have a computer automate this all for me sure a friend of mine just lost their job as a quantitative trader for a hedge fund <laughs> you now that does it better doesn't get emotional doesn't uh, make stupid trades less arguments <sighs> pretty soon we're all going to be playing chess with a computer well i mean what about authenticity though like right i mean what about like, being human there's those real dolls but I don't, I don't like Siri because Siri is not a real person. Yeah, and like, can AI really write a script? <laughs> yet? Is it close? I don't think it's even it's, close. Yeah, it's not even Skynet level. <laughs> it stays for a while, right? <laughs> right. It doesn't linger. <laughs> well, so how is enjoy Dallas? Likewise, you enjoy like, New York. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's you know filthy and nonsense, but it'll do. <laughs> This is good. So don't get ripped off. Don't let no, people I, drag you down for the mud. Never, never get in an empty subway car. That's that's what I've learned. Oh, always, always have a witness. Yep. Take out so, your phone when someone's wronging you, and let the internet decide who's right. This is it. Fiat Lux, as they say. Let them be right. right. 
Yeah. Anyone trolling you on social media, just lose their contact. Just saying it nicely. Uh, yeah. If they're just being snobby and be open-minded, don't look for a sp- just one answer. Uh, maybe there's an in-between answer regarding your situation. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to think of it. I'm using BetterHelp now, and I love just therapy in general because I think so many people who have a bad experience with therapy, well, that's just it. They just saw one you know, advisor and they didn't, weren't good at opening up. Yeah, like any business, some are better than others, right? Totally. And I get that's a lot of time and money, but that's just it too. You you decide how much you want to invest in this. That's awesome. That you're, I am so here for like these younger masculine men who are like... I'm tired of the guys yeah. doing the whole, have bigger stones. It's a little, okay. You guys are in therapy. And like, that's so healthy. I love just it. Just cry. Just cry. Yeah. One day. Oh, that person said so. It's about me. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Dude, this one is so good. Well, it was fun to chat. It was fun to get to meet you. Likewise, okay. Miss Taylor. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Absolutely. Uh, we'll keep in touch. And Absolutely. for real, uh, yeah. any other topic that's down your lane that you're just like, we, I got to share my two cents on this. <laughs> good. We'll pester each other. Stellar. Be safe on set. Avoid COVID. We'll return after these messages. The Jacked Up Review Show podcast is honored to be part of the Blind Knowledge Podcast Network. Join anytime, talk the talk, and enjoy yourselves. There's something enlightening for everyone with this crowd of cool cats. Check them out. Hey, it's Brent Pope, the host of Breakfast with Brent Pope. You've seen me on some of your favorite TV shows saying things like, give it up, Jimmy. You got to sink this putt to win. On Breakfast with Brent Pope, I sit down with guests from the entertainment world and we do it all over breakfast. Or should I say breakfast? Every week on Breakfast, you get inside Hollywood info and tips, great breakfast wrecks and booty debates. Most of all, you get the most delightful 30 minutes of your week. So dig in. It's breakfast time. Listen at breakfast.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are found. Do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between Goku and Superman? Hi, I'm James Gavsey, and on the Who Would Win show, me and my co-host Ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics, movies, and video games. We got a new show every week, and almost always am I the winner. (laughs) Yeah, not true, Ray. In the past, we've discussed such matches as Captain America vs. Darth Vader, Solid Snake vs. the Iron Giant, classic matchups like RoboCop vs. Terminator, and even the Muppets versus Sesame Street. That one was crazy. So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up-